Hi, in this video we're going to look at derivatives of inverse functions in general. We've looked at some specific examples already, but we're going to talk about inverse functions in a more general sense right now. So before we get to derivatives of inverse functions, we're going to just do a little quick review of some stuff that we already know about inverse functions. So I'm going to just start here with a graph of a function. Uh, so we might have a function uh, y equals f of x and we'd be interested in thinking about the inverse of that function. So first of all this function that I drew here appears to be a function that could possibly have an inverse. This function would pass horizontal line test so it's one to one so we could actually have an inverse function and then if we think about what the inverse function does uh, the inverse function basically the idea is that for any function we've got an input and then the function matches that input to a particular output and then the inverse function just reverses that. So in terms of a graph of a function and thinking about overall um, when we're talking about functions overall uh, if I have a point kind of from this diagram that I have over here to the right uh, that would mean that I have an input point A and then the output would be B on the graph of my original function and then uh, if I think about the inverse function, the inverse function would have an input of B and an output of A, so my X and Y coordinates would be switched around. So I would end up with a point B comma A on the graph of the inverse function. And if we think about that in general for all the points on the graph of the function, we can think about how the graph of the function and its inverse are related to each other and they'd be reflected through that line y equals x. So this is just a rough sketch of an inverse function here, y equals f inverse of x. So what I have here is a graph of a function and its inverse on the same graph, uh, at least a sketch of that. It's not a perfect drawing of that, but a sketch of that. So a perfect sketch should be a perfect reflection in the line y equals x minus okay but not perfect here uh, but the big deal idea here is that these points if I have a point AB on the graph of the original function then that corresponds with a point BA on the inverse function graph. The other important thing about that is if you kind of look at the diagram I drew over here with the arrows uh, what would be the input or the X's for the F function uh, and then the Y's for the F function actually switches around the role of the x and the y for the inverse function. So that's one important thing to note in some of the theorems that we're going to look at now is that what is the x for the f function is not the same as what is the x or the input for the inverse function. So those x's are not the same. Uh, so on one of these points the x is a and on the other point the x is b. Um, Alright, so that's one important idea about functions and inverses anyway. There are lots of others. We could talk about things with domain and range and all kinds of other things with uh, functions and inverses, but we're going to come back to this graph in a little bit here. Um, what this section really is about is derivatives of inverse functions, so we're going to look at a couple of things to do with that. Um, so one issue is notation uh, and how we might denote the derivative of an inverse function. So uh, the first thing would be that I have an inverse function, say f inverse of x, and then I want to differentiate that with respect to x. So I could write it like this with the differential operator d dx of f inverse of x, or sometimes our textbook likes to leave off the of x part so they might write d dx of f inverse or even just to kind of streamline that a little bit more they might write that as d f inverse dx over dx so those are all kind of just different uh, notations that mean the same thing. Uh, the theorem down below here actually uses prime notation so usually we like to put the prime right after the f if we're talking about f prime of x but the problem with an inverse function is that I already have something there kind of in the way uh, so I can't really put the prime right there with the f inverse so uh, sometimes we put it outside at parentheses like this or we might write that as f inverse prime. Okay, so those are all just different notations that would indicate the derivative of an inverse function. 
um, and what that would represent. We've talked lots about what derivatives represent and we'll talk lots more about lots of other interpretations, but the basic idea, uh, geometrically anyway, to think about is that a derivative is a slope. So this would be slope on, uh, slope of the tangent line uh, to the graph of the inverse function. at a particular point maybe, or just kind of an expression in general. So slopes of tangent lines to the graph of the inverse function. Okay, so um, there's a theorem in this section about how derivatives of inverse functions are related to ordinary functions, and that theorem is written down here below. This is how it's shown in our textbook. And there's a lot of heavy duty notation here that I think most students have a hard time understanding. One important thing, first of all, is that x's that are inputs for one function is not the same as the x's that are inputs for the other function. So I want to kind of just write on this theorem a little bit and explain what all the little pieces represent here. Okay, so the left side of this theorem uh, says, first of all, if we have a function that has an inverse and is differentiable, then, all right, on the left side of this equation, this would represent the derivative of the inverse function, or geometrically anyway, we could think about that as the slope of the tangent line to the graph of y equals f inverse of x. slope of the tangent line to the graph of y equals f inverse of x at many points or at a particular point maybe. Okay, and then if we think about the notation that's on the other side of the equation, uh, thinking about what that is, first of all I have 1 over, so a reciprocal, Okay, and then there's a bunch of other notation here. Here we've got f prime, so that would be the derivative or slope of a tangent line but this is uh, for the original function uh, slope of the tangent line to the graph of uh, y equals f of x and then what I have inside there the input for that uh, really would be a value here so that would be the f inverse of x so that would be the y coordinate of that point on the inverse function or the x coordinate of the point on the original function. So this would be, uh, if I think about that b and a, so thinking about what that would be, slope of the tangent line to the graph of y equals f of x at, at x equals a and the slope of the tangent line to the graph of y equals f inverse of x on the inverse function graph, that has a different x coordinate at x equals b. I'm referring to the a's and the b's in that diagram we had up above here uh, where we had a point a, b on the original function graph and a point b, a on the other function graph. So one thing that's confusing about that notation is that the x's and the inputs are different for the inverse function and the original function. But what the um, theorem really explains is this idea about these slopes being reciprocals of each other. And if you look at these function graphs and just think about how functions and inverses act and how this role of x's and y's switches and you can think about these slopes of these tangent lines and think about rises and runs that if I have a run of whatever amount and a rise of whatever amount, so I have some particular slope there, that when I think about the inverse function graph that's turned around. So whatever is the run here, the horizontal distance here, say that's 1 here, that would correspond to a rise of 1 on the other one. And then on this uh, first triangle I drew here, if the vertical distance is say 2, that would correspond to a horizontal distance on the other triangle of 2. So for the first one, the original function graph, I might have a slope rise over run, m is 2 over 1, and then on the second function graph, the inverse function graph, the slope of that, the rise is 1 and the run is 2. And you can look at other points on the graph and see that it has that same sort of relationship that the slopes 
at corresponding points. So I've got a point here, another A, B point here, which would correspond to a B, A point over here. And you can look at those slopes and see those as reciprocals of each other. My sketch here is just a sketch. It's not perfect, so it's a little bit hard to see that on the sketch here. But if you look at some actual uh, nicely uh, made graphs from a computer or something, you can see those slopes a little bit better. So I'm going to just kind of summarize in terms of slopes what this theorem says. So what this means in terms of slopes is that at a point a, B on the graph of F, the original function, if we have a slope of M, then at the point B, A on the graph of the inverse function, our slope will be the reciprocal, 1 over m, reciprocal slopes. So not the same point, but corresponding points, then the function and its inverse have reciprocal slopes. Okay, so we're going to look at an example here. Uh, so this example asks us to find a couple of things here, but then uh, we actually can use those things to answer some other questions about this function. All right, so uh, the first thing it says here for f of x equals, we've got a function. It asks us to find each of the following. And so the first thing is just find f of 1. So I'm just plugging 1 into the original function. And I just conveniently chose a nice easy number to plug in here. So it's pretty easy to calculate. So I get um, 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus 1. So I get 3. Okay, so what that means is that I have a point 1, 3 on the graph of F. The answer to what it asked is 3, the output when I plug in an input of 1. But what that describes is a point, 1, 3, on the graph of the original function f of x. Okay, the second question asks us to find f prime of 1. So the first thing I would want to do is find f prime of x. Just use my derivative rules to find f prime of x. So 5x to the 4th plus 6x squared plus 1, and then I'll plug in 1 to that. So 5 times 1 to the 4th plus 6 times 1 squared plus 1. So 5 plus 6 plus 1, so I get 12. Okay, so it just asked me to find a number, but I want to think about what that means. That uh, is a derivative at x equals 1, so that represents a slope of 12, a slope of the tangent line, um, or the slope of the curve, um, at x equals 1. And x equals 1 corresponds to that point 1, 3, or at the point 1, 3. So that 12 tells us about the slope at the point 1, 3. Okay, the next question here asks us to find f inverse of 3. And so sometimes students want to try to find an equation for the inverse function and then plug in 3, uh, which you could do, although this problem, it's a pretty big mess to try to do. Uh, if you think about trying to find inverse functions, that's really going to be a pretty much a disaster on this one because of all those exponents. But uh, the better way to do this problem is to think about what this really means. I have a point 1, 3 on the graph of f of x, and what this is asking me for is the y-coordinate of a point on the inverse function graph, so the f inverse graph, when the input is 3 when the x-coordinate on that point is 3. Okay, and so going back to understanding that diagram, that A, B diagram, and what inverse functions really do, uh, we can kind of think about the point that we already know about, 1, 3, that's on the graph of f of x. Well, that tells us about a point on the graph of the inverse function. So if I have a point 1, 3 on the graph of f of x, that means that there's a point 3, 1 on the graph of 
of F inverse, just using my previous work. So I can tell the answer to this problem, F inverse of 3, without having to actually do any calculations. I'm just understanding how the inverse function is related to my original function. All right, so the answer to this question is 1. The output or the y coordinate when I plug in x equals 3 on that inverse function graph. Okay, so I've got a one point on the graph of my f of x function and then I have a corresponding point on the graph of the inverse function. But what this section is really about is derivatives of inverse functions. So that's what we want to think about next. All right, so I have this point 1, 3 on the graph of the original function, and at that point I've got a slope of 12. And if I use my theorem that's in this section about slopes of inverse functions, uh, it tells us that at this point 3, 1, on the graph of the inverse function, the slope will be the reciprocal of what the slope was at that corresponding point on the other graph. All right, so that's what that theorem says, that at these corresponding points, not the same point, but at these corresponding points, the slopes on the original function and the inverse function will be reciprocals of each other. Okay, so um, we could do some other things too. We could write equations of lines tangent to the curves. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that just as one other practice thing here. Um, so I could use some of my work here. I could write the equation of the line tangent to the original function graph to f graph and the point we were working with there was 1, 3 on the original function graph. So the equation of the line tangent to that f graph at the point 1, 3 would be y minus y1 equals m, that one had a slope of 12, times x minus x1. Or if I want to solve for y, uh, let's see, I would have y equals 12x minus 12, and then if I add the 3 over, I'd have y equals 12x minus 9. And then I could also write the equation of a line tangent to the inverse function graph at the corresponding point, not at the same point, but at the corresponding point, 3, 1, and that line would have slope 1 twelfth. So I would write the equation of that line, y minus 1 equals 1 twelfth, times the quantity x minus 3. Uh, and that would be okay, or if I want to solve it for y, I could distribute through the 1 12th and add 1 to both sides. So I'd have y equals 1 12th x, and then minus 3 twelfths plus 1 would be plus 9 twelfths, or I could reduce that to plus 3 fourths. All right, so I've got these two equations of tangent lines to an original function and an inverse function. Again, not at the same point, but at this corresponding point where the inputs and the outputs are switched. I'm going to scroll back up so that we can think about the picture there. Uh, that can help you understand what's really going on here. So we've got the corresponding points on the function and its inverse, and their slopes are reciprocals of each other. Their slopes are reciprocals of each other, those tangent slopes at those points. All right, so you should try some of the problems in the homework and make sure you can do that uh, using this theorem about derivatives of general inverse functions.